In this tutorial, let's learn how to download, install, and run Node.js on your developer machine. Uh, there are a couple of ways to do it. This tutorial is gonna cover the simpler way. The next tutorial is gonna cover a slightly more complicated but more powerful way. So we'll look at both of them and you can pick which one you wanna use. So the simpler way is to just go to nodejs.org, you get this website, which basically lets you download and install Node.js, right? And detects which uh, operating system you're in, and then it gives you the downloader for your operating system. So right now, I'm on Mac OS, and it actually interestingly gives me two options. So there's one option called LTS, and there's one option called current. This is actually common, and this is what you would see when you load this website. This is actually the two streams, release streams that Node.js releases. So there is one long-term support uh, schedule, right? So there is this version, there is a specific version that's been marked for long-term support, and which basically means that it's gonna get security fixes for a longer term. And you have the current version, which is kind of more frequently updated and it doesn't get long-term support. So after a certain point, there are not a lot of security updates and all that stuff. It's kind of like a rolling release. Uh, this is common in a lot of other software distributions as well. So this is typically meant for like uh, enterprises or companies which are using a large uh, developer base. Uh, they use long-term support because they don't want uh, things to break or they don't want to have the pressure of having to update all the time so they can stick to one version and then use it for a longer time knowing that uh, this is gonna get supported. Whereas developers who are trying out things at home on your personal laptop, they can use um, the current version, not having to worry too much about uh, the long-term support uh, requirements. So what I'm gonna do is choose current, and then uh, it basically downloads uh, an installer that I can just install. So I'm just gonna click continue, continue, um, agree to the terms and conditions. You of course have to read all the licensing terms and conditions, all the 100 pages. I just skipped it, but you don't do that. Uh, click install. And then um, just installs it and has it ready. So here's a, a good helpful summary of what this did. So it has installed Node.js to user local bin node. So this is the directory where it installs it on a Mac or a Linux operating system. And then it's also installed npm to this path, which is user local bin npm, all right? So we will look at what node is and what npm is a bit later, but these are the two commands that it's installed on your machine. And then uh, it also has this helpful tip, which says make sure user local bin is in your path. Why should this be in your path? Because this guy has installed a couple of commands in the directory. So if that's, uh, if this root path, right, the parent path, user local bin, is not in your path variable, then you cannot run node anywhere in your command and have it execute. You have to go to that specific directory and execute it. So basically saying, hey, make sure that thing is in your path so that you can execute the node.js and npm commands no matter where you are in the command prompt. Okay, so that's what this is. I have a feeling this is already there. If you don't see it, then you might have to install it, but let's verify it so that I'll teach you how to actually make sure that this is in your path. The installation process is kind of similar if you're doing this on Windows. So here I have the Node.js website open on a Windows operating system. I can click the same two buttons and this time I'm gonna get the Windows installer. The installer is again gonna look very similar to what we've just seen. Uh, it's just a typical setup process. And uh, I can choose where Node.js needs to be installed to. I have uh, C program files, Node.js as a default. I'm going to select everything here as the default. Here you notice there is an add to path option, which basically makes sure that the node executable is added to your Windows environment variable path so that you can run node commands anywhere in your command prompt. So I click next and this is an optional step for native modules. I'm gonna skip this for now. Uh, unless you know you're gonna be using this, you know, you can, you can choose to skip this as well and then just install. 
And when the installation is done, I get this confirmation message that the install has completed successfully. So if you're not sure how to verify this in the path, let me teach you how to make sure that your Node installation is successful. After installing, you can probably try this out and make sure your machines have Node installed successfully as well. So here's how you do it. Open the terminal or the command prompt and type in node-v. Okay, so this should give you the version of Node that's installed on your machine. If you don't get the version of Node, if you get something like, uh, let me actually make a typo here so that I can simulate a program that doesn't exist. Well, if you get a error like this, command not found. But if you're getting this error, command not found for the actual command Node, that means that that path is not available in your dollar path. So make sure you add that in there. You can look up on Google to see how to add uh, a path to your dollar path variable. But here, this seems to exist. Node-V is giving me the version of Node that's installed on my machine. So I'm happy Node is installed, all right? For Mac users, there is another option of installing Node, which is using Homebrew. So Homebrew is a package manager that you can install on your Mac. And uh, this is their website. So this is basically uh, a simple install command for Homebrew. You just copy paste this command in the terminal and execute it. It's gonna download and install Homebrew. And once you do that, you can actually execute commands like this. Brew install, and then whatever you wanna install, and then it's gonna install it. So you can run the command for installing Node by using brew install and then Node.js, and it's gonna install Node.js on your machine. This is the second option. Both of them are the simpler options. What they're gonna do is install the latest version of Node.js, right? The most current version, either long-term support or the current version. It's gonna install a new version. And you're kind of stuck with that, right? So when you say Node-V, this is the version that you have. So there are certain situations where you will need to juggle between multiple versions of Node, okay? So let's say somebody has given you a program which runs on Node version 10 only and it doesn't work, work with Node version 13. And what do you do? You're gonna have to get the version downloader for version 10 and then execute that and then use that program and then switch to this. It's a bit of a pain. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna teach you an alternative way of installing Node, which also lets you change versions whenever you want, right? You can pick a version of Node that you can choose to run your programs, and then you can switch to a different version once you're done, right? It's a more flexible way of installing Node. So let's check that out in the next tutorial.